Um, so tell everybody your background, kind of what Steve just told me. Steve Horn, I'm a trombone player. Initially I cut my teeth working in Las Vegas and then we moved to Chicago and I've been there for almost 20 years now and this is my first time adjudicating or working at this jazz festival. And you're doing? A trombone, I'm a sort of a, I don't think we call it, well maybe we're called clinicians here so I'm clinicking the bands and then I'll be performing tonight on trombone as well as running an, an improv clinic, an improvisation clinic and a jazz, uh, rather a trombone master class this afternoon. So then you've seen all the bands? No, I've worked with three big bands so far, and they were just wonderful. And you want to know the names of them? Oh, well, I, you know. I don't know that I have. Probably just uh, your general impressions of them. And My general impression is the quality is very high. The kids were very enthusiastic, and I think they were able to glean quite a bit of information from the clinics, not necessarily from me, but there were three of us working in as a group, and I thought the kids really did absorb quite a bit of useful information. Um, can you talk about the the clinic itself and um, the benefit to uh, musicians that are trying to get an ear for jazz? And I mean, a lot of these kids, they they're, they've only been in jazz for one or two years, and probably haven't come to a clinic like this. Jazz is a bit of a language. Music is a language, and jazz is sort of, I, sometimes I teach my, my kids that the jazz is more like the playground language, whereas classical music might be the Queen's English. And when we're working with these kids, we try to teach them how to put the accents in the proper spot and to, to make it feel like jazz on two and four instead of the classical music, which is oftentimes on one and three. But just being exposed to guys like me and the others who have made jazz a career, I think they just tend to absorb the groove just as when human beings interact with one another, we tend to glean and gather knowledge from one another without actually even having to say some things sometimes. And so that's what I've noticed is just our presence standing in front of them and giving them some guidance, they tend to just intuitively figure out what to do. And then also musicians learn from other musicians, right? That's Absolutely. Constantly. We try to encourage them to learn to listen to one another and feel like they're working more as a group rather than an individual effort. That's a big part of what we're doing here as well. And then, uh, what's your involvement with Essentially Ellington? I mean, I you... have no involvement with that other than I'm involved with these other fine people who are heavily involved in it. My teaching is more along the lines of a, I teach trombone lessons primarily, so I'm not involved in the actual running of ensembles, and that's where the Ellington thing And your impression overall of the the clinic here, I mean, or of every... This is great. What a facility, first of all. And then, <clears throat> not speaking about myself, but the others who I'm privileged to work with, these are some top quality cats, so it's just wonderful for these kids to have this experience. Did you have an experience like this when you were growing up? I did. It means the world to them, yeah. To be able to hear a pro play and hear a pro um, explain how they got to where they are, it, it, it makes a huge difference. Especially to kids that maybe are from smaller communities where they don't have access to working professionally. Okay.